What's up, man? I'm your boy, Poonie Moa. Your queen. And we are back on Why Oops Podcast, episode 20. So today, interesting first topic. It's all over the news, all over social media. Artificial intelligence, AI. You see a lot of people using it, loving it. Some don't like it or afraid of it. The biggest question that, that's come across the social media, and that's what I want to talk about and get your thoughts on it and get our, our viewers' thoughts on it. Do you think AI is going to steal jobs? Is AI going to steal jobs? Why would you think people even ask that question? You know, Artificial. it's the fear. You know, the the fear of change, right? I think uh, uh, we're we're as us as human, we're we're just accustomed to what we already know. But uh, with that said, I had to think a lot about this because this is an interesting topic. So imagine a world where machines are ready to do the work that we've always been doing, right? Yep. With these artificial intelligence that were created by humans replace our jobs completely. That's the crazy thing about it, though, Queen. That's where it gets me all bottled up because it's like, okay, we created this mess. Now we're the ones that are going to be afraid of it. I'm looking at it like this. Picture a busy street filled with hard workers. And you know, and I know a lot of hard worker individuals and dreamers, each with their own unique path. So in the near future, these machines they may indeed help these diligent souls like ourselves and other those that work hard. I think AI with its amazing abilities has the potential to change industries and the process for more effective and efficient work, which were previously done already by us humans. But I think it'll be a little just more accurate, like calculators when it comes to additions, stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm going to say it's not going to replace our work. You know, I think of, uh, I believe in harmony, just like the moon dances gracefully with the stars. So with artificial intelligence, working together with us, the people, um, I think it's going to coexist, you know, in an existing vibrant symphony, I guess. I mean, Queen, the way I look at it is artificial intelligence may be a good thing. Because of the repetitive task and the data driven that that it does, it's it's consistent. It's whatever we input, that's the information we're going to get. So that's consistency. But it can never possess the special qualities that we have, us human beings. See, I think of the uh, us. Uh, I think of our parents, the warm embrace that our parents have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think about artists when they're painting on their canvas, how they're so you know. How they handle the brush gently when they're when they're paint, uh, painting a mirror, and uh, understanding like just look at the healers. I mean, I don't think artificials can actually be doctors, right? But uh, these special, so these these human qualities that we have, empathy, creativity, and uh, intuitions are what makes us who we are. I mean, heck, we're the ones that created artificial intelligence. These qualities, uh, it protects us from the, uh, the threat of AI actually taking our jobs completely. Uh, will it affect, you know, our workforce? Yes. But let's, I think of it like uh, when uh, the newspaper, remember when a day, back in the days in the U.S., uh, when post mail was mailed, how was it mailed? They had to ride on horses, chariots, mm -hmm. right? Going across country. Then all of a sudden, the railroads came in into play. You know, people were nervous about that. Then all of a sudden, newspaper came to play. People were nervous about that. What are these papers that are people reading on, you know? Then it went on to cell phones. Well, before cell phones, regular mobile phones. Well, we had home phone, you know? So when the cell phones came out, these big, remember those big block mobile phones that, we, that uh, yeah, our parents yeah. used to carry? Yes. You know, in Samoa, only certain individuals had those, and a lot of them were like government employees. Uh, were we nervous when everybody started having a flip phone? Yeah, you know, I mean, 
there's always changes, but I think uh, through time, many innovations come and go. Sometimes it causes fear, you know, but often bringing positive change. Uh, all of these transformed the world, especially when the internet hit. When the internet hit, it really changed the world. And it is, now look at that, we're talking about artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. But it didn't take away all our jobs that, you know, people do fear. And they always talk about, oh, they're going to take away our jobs. No, instead it opened doors to new opportunities, unimaginable possibilities, and different type of works. I mean, look at us. We're all podcasting now. You yeah. know, I used to feel like only people on television, right? Certain mm -hmm. certain industry were able to do that. But even the music world, I mean, artists are, are able to create their own music. So it's opening doors for everybody. That's the power of internet, which then helped out, created this thing, what we call artificial intelligence. And allowing us the uh, 98% population to be able to make, you know, at the end of the day, money, to be able to become up to uh, on the unheard for the rich folks out there. You know, it's it, they're all talking about balance, scaling the balance. But I think the only ones that are doing a lot of complaints and, and trying to make the world yeah. fear fear about these stuff are, the, are those that are in control, mm -hmm. you know? And that's where I'm at with that, Queen. I, I Do I think that it's going to take over our job? Some, somewhat, but no, nah, it's going to open new doors of, like I said, unimaginable possibilities of different kind of positions, right? Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at with that one, cuz. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a lot of uh, fear out there about it, but like you say, you just got to look at it in a positive way. And you mentioned it earlier. Um, it, it opened up opportunities to other jobs. So guess what? We're going to have to start learning those who want to, you know, who are willing to adapt and learn about the artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. There are new jobs out there that requires to learn about it. And then, of course, yeah, we're going to lose some jobs, you know, job displacements, because uh, that, that is one of the biggest concerns of OI is potential for, for job loss. So, you know, it's, it's positions that's previously performed by us humans. Um it, but it's only in certain industries, okay? It's just um, for jobs that are easily automated. When uh, you talked about some of the, the pros of it, you mentioned it increased efficiency. So what that means is you re you talked about the automating the repetitive stuff, allowing um, us humans to focus on more complex and creative work. And this yes. can... You, you mentioned that it can lead to increased productivity and efficiency. And then also as businesses and um, like us, you know, entrepreneurs, cost savings, you know, it reduces labor costs for the businesses and it can perform tasks faster without the need of, for breaks resulting in cost savings over time. This is a nightmare for unions. <laughs> <laughs> because this is what they fight for is is the people's uh, right to their jobs but this right here as businesses business owners it's all about the money so if ai can come in and take over that part you know what we're it's part of it and then uh what they also businesses look into is the accuracy of things that's happening you know compared to we the people um you mentioned er earlier they can collect data, and guess what? AI can process large amounts of data quickly and make more, you know, precise decisions. In according to what we input into AI, what because basically we tell AI what to do. Um, and then uh, there's a lot of pros of it, and then the cons, you know, like we said earlier, is the only thing I see is job displacement. You know, um, oh, another thing is um, ethical concerns. People raise con um, raises issues about the privacy and data. That's a security issue that people are worried about. Uh, we hear people complain about every time I talk about something, it pops up on my phone. Algorithm. Yes, the algorithm. Mm -hmm. They're keeping track of everything, you know. So that's what people are worried about. 
right now with AI, how quickly information is being recorded and how quickly information is being given out. And that's what's uh, some of the concerns. And then the lack of human touch. We all, we, we're all about customer service. We're all about face-to-face, -face, oh, you know, yeah. with each other because we want that quality. We like to have that empathy, you know, and then one-on-one. -on -one. Because a lot of things get done one on one, and that's 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 what you're going to lose in you know with certain jobs. And then um, if people if people pay attention to like I always say this is what I say on WeFobs too is they have movies out there now. There's a new movie coming out where it's AI against mankind. <laughs> mm. You said it earlier. You're like. Well, you know, it's good. what about all, you know, the, the negative part is that AI, the machines or the robots are, are, are going to take over, you know, uh, the society, basically. So when I, I I went to the movies over the weekend and one of the movies, I, I forgot the name of it, but it's a preview of a movie where basically it was the world against all AI and then the AI, the AI was controlled by a little kid. Oh, man. So it's it's crazy. Um, I like this topic because it, it's it's a hot topic. AI. And I like it. I like the, to use it because it's it's pretty cool, you know. But like you said, um, the only ones that's really worried about it because they don't want us average Joes to have access to it because it helps out if people know how to use it correctly. And that's why they're trying to um, control it with the 2% is trying to fight over on who has uh, control and trying to make up different type of AI products out there. So that's that's my um, little spiel on, on the artificial intelligence. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's just that kind of thing where it, it, it the, you know another bad thing about it is it's it's for there are people out there that they're they're set in their ways right they don't like changes and um it's going to affect them too the ones that are not willing to change they're just okay right. with with whatever they're doing in their life right we're talking about jobs i mean i've i know a lot of people in my own work industry that's been doing this even before I was even born, the same position. And they're, they're just okay with that. And I'm, you know, to each its own. Like, I get it. Like, you know, we can't have everybody think the same. That's why, uh, I, you know, if I'm looking at religion, you know, to me, I'm looking like comparison. That's why there's so, in the Christianity, especially in America, Christianity, there's so many religion, right? So many different religions. Right. Because everybody or the group themselves, the church members of themselves, feel a certain way of how things should be run. Yeah. And that's how I look at it in this world of uh, AI when it comes to jobs. It's uh, the ones that are poking on it and complaining about it because it's the, they don't want that change. And, you know, it's just kind of one of them things. It's kind of that one saying that I've heard was like, hey. It's okay. You don't, you know, AI is not going to take over your job. It's the person that's learning to, that's accepting artificial intelligence and perfecting it is the one that's going to take your job. Mm -hmm. So you need to, it's, you know, your hands are being forced to learn something new. Unfortunately, that's how the world goes. The ones Just that are like, stubborn. You know, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you said um, learning, learning a new job. So when you're talking about cell phones, another comparison is, remember, it was all about typewriters back in the days. We didn't even have typewriters. Typewriters is manual. You know, if mm -hmm. you messed up, you get that little white out or if not, you got to start all over again from the beginning. Yes. Then the computers came along, you know, along with the printers. It was easier. to, cause, and, and a lot of folks had a hard time learning the computer because it, it was too much to learn. Mm -hmm. You know? Like turning on a computer, or trying to get to the system to uh, to type the paper, you know, to type out the the information they need. But the typewriter yeah. easy because it's right there. They put it in, type right, and then that, then the computer came along. I mean, simple things like that. People had to adjust. They had to they had to start learning. 
No, it's 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 the ones that didn't want to do it are the ones that, yes. that were left behind. Yeah. You know? No, I get it. Yeah, I mean, sh- <laughs> and, and I'm gonna keep it real, adapt, Queen. Right? I, 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 yeah, we gotta adapt because I'm I'm one of them that uh, did purposely did not want to learn type typing. You know. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what it's better not be one of those two finger typers. <laughs> hey, thank God for AI and Chat GPT and Voice Demand has come along. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, see now, Voice Demand is here. You, you uh, just—it's all going to go in there, man. Yeah, you just say what you have to say, and they'll type mm-hmm. it for you. My goodness, you know that's this kind of topic goes on to like. Uh, I wouldn't want to say that I'm against education, but like I said earlier, it's just if you don't want to join the, you know, get on that wave, you'll be left behind on that certain industry, you know, career wise when it comes to jobs. Yes. Right? yes. So for those that are goes to, that attends college, get a degree, you know, they end up with good jobs and, you know, more power to you. But for people like myself who uh, it's not that I didn't believe in education, it's just I couldn't afford it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not not my parents didn't have enough money, and I didn't do good 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 in school in high school, so I had to learn, you know, on my own, yeah. like with the jobs that I had, and uh, that's why I'm such a advocate. Well, I want to say advocate. I'm a I'm for artificial intelligence and just all these new stuff, right? It's because it's helping somebody like myself, so I'm I'm yeah. always for it because I I it, it evens the playing field. Not that I'm a, like I said, not that I'm against education. It's just I've always believed that uh, you know. No, I, I I'm glad you brought I'm up the education part because you have to go with what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. Back in the 20th century, now we're in the 21st century, right? The education is important, but it depends on what type of education you're willing to learn. Yes. So as the four year that we were taught to go to college to get a four-year degree and then get a good job. Right now, that's that's not very, it's become um, obsolete that that go into the college and get a four-year degree and get a job. Right now, it's all about education in finance or education in AI. Education is some trade where you can learn. Education in entrepreneur. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's a whole different thing. It's yes, it's all about education. But guess what? The four year college idea was great years ago when when there were actually jobs out there that, you know, when you leave college, you get it. Remember, not everybody comes out of college, gets jobs right away. Yeah, it's a, it no, I remember. Up. You remember that time? There was a time in the uh in the 2000s where a lot of college students and poor uh, bachelors, a lot of bachelors. uh degree holders were having such a hard time getting into jobs, which is kind of like it's still now. Yeah, you're right. Now, right. And it's like, like I said, it's I'm not, I'm not going against education. But it's, it's the reality, bro. Reality, <laughs> right? I would love to go get educated, you know. Shit, I, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm a product of that. I, I have my education, you mm-hmm. know, I have a good job, but then as you're looking at it, you're there's many more other opportunities right now. It's you know people grew up wanting to white pick a fence, get married, go to college, you right. know, get a job. That was the goal back in the days, you know, the American goal, or whatever. But right now, you have an opportunity to learn other stuff, follow other people. That's what the two percenters are doing. Mm. You know, they find a mentor, they learn from that mentor. And guess what? Maybe the right now is the whole AI thing, if you want to start learning and probably get paid, you know, the amount that you want to get paid, it, the, the, the thing is in everything is in your, the palm of your hands right now is what decision are you going to make? You know, you got to see what fits you. Like you said, you weren't the type that wanted to go to college. Trust me. I did not want to go to the college. The only reason why I went to college is I just wanted to make my mom happy, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but it was fun. I got my degree, you know, and everything. And plus, someone told me that I couldn't get my four-year degree, so I just went to prove them wrong. You know, it, it was, <laughs> yeah. See, I was I was a stubborn one. I'm like, oh, you're not gonna go anywhere. Like, I don't care what you say. Fuck you. And I just, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna live my life, baby. You know. I know. As soon as someone said, "Yeah," my mom said, "You can't. You're not gonna get your degree." I said, "What?" I said, "Oh, it's it's on and cracking." And then I wanted to make my mom proud because she wasn't. She was able to finish her AA, but she. 
she couldn't go finish her bachelor's because she had to take care of us. But it's all about, like I said, the type of education you want to learn. Like if I, you know, that's why me and you, we're learning this AI. We're, we're taking something that's kind of negative, but making it into a positive because we're using it in a positive way of learning how we're adapting to it. And those of you who are listening right now and who are afraid of AI, instead of being afraid, use it to your to your benefits. You know, um, mm. it's a great thing to learn. So, so I guess what I'm saying is um, the more you learn about things that you're afraid of, you have fear, the more you understand it, then the fear will slowly disappear. You know what I'm saying? So it's, yep, it's just I agree. your goals at work. <laughs> and, that, and that goes, and that also speaks a good thing on uh, for education people, for, you know, the the knowledge of the the folks that are the students of the game when it comes to college and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to learn something in a certain yeah. field, and that's why you went to school for it, you know, and yeah. hey, power to everybody. It's not, you know. So what what's our conclusion when it comes to uh is it gonna take what do you, what do you suggest? What do you think? Is it gonna take over jobs or well, you... of course it's gonna take over jobs, but like you said, certain jobs. There are gonna be job displacement, obviously. We'll be naive if we said it, it's not gonna take over jobs. Mm -hmm. So my take to it is you know it's gonna happen, you know it's happening right yes. now. But AI also you can use it as a to create different type of jobs or learn how to use IA so you can get a job in that field. AI. So mm -hmm. yes. So just adapt. Be yeah, just adapt and, and just be willing to learn and to take in the, the change that's coming our way. It's here. We just got to um, accept it and learn it if you're, if you're wanting to, and then just uh, do the best with it. Man, that's what's up. AI, AI, y'all don't worry about it. Worry about it and don't worry about it. Heck, right. <laughs> read your tone. <laughs> read your tone. <laughs> The way you talked about it, you're right. You know, it's it affects everything. So mm. this podcast is brought to you by WeFobs.io. You can find our WeFobs Nation store there, along with things that are best sellers to WeFobs Nation members. Don't forget to check out our podcast section for all WeFobs podcasts. WeFobs is where we keep it entertaining and educational. So right. you talked about the Costco one, Queen. Let's uh, talk about this. Costco is cracking down on card holders, right? They're having people uh, check IDs, like you have to have your ID. Let's talk about that. Yeah, that's crazy. So the whole thing about Costco cracking down on membership card sharing. You heard about the same thing with Netflix sharing password, but we're going to focus on this whole Costco <laughs> membership because this is our topic. Costco cracking down on membership card sharing. I'm thinking it's it's money driven, obviously. And we know a lot of people, you know, when we go shopping with family, we're always sharing cards. It's no secret that even Costco knows. But why is it a big problem for them? You know, uh, we can probably answer, but you know, when, this is just our opinion, guys. It's just our opinion, our little coconut brains here. Mm. You know what, Queen? It goes, uh, it's the same thing as AI, uh, you know, how Costco Corporation or company is cracking down on this because they're losing money. You know, mm -hmm. well, of course, Costco is a business that sells in bulk mm -hmm. or for private customers who purchase a membership. As we all know in America, what Costco is all about, Sam's Club. Uh, what other ones are there? Any other besides Sam's Club and Costco that does? But those that? are the two big ones. Where those are the two big ones, yeah. right? So it's uh the way I look at it. It's just a company that decided that had this brilliant idea to make it uh, sell stuff in bulk and make money off of it. Well, the people we we were able to figure it out. We found loopholes. <laughs> One new family member can buy, uh, uh, get a, a Costco member, and there's 20 of us in that family member. And all we need is just that one card that will benefit the 20 family members living in that same household. Well, maybe mm. different household, but it's exactly. one, it, it's that's how I feel about the AI. You know, it, the good thing is there's going to be us out there that's going to find loopholes 
for us to generate the population of the 98%. <laughs> so, you know, the two percenters again are going to crack down on this because they're losing money out of it. But hey, that's a personal problem for those that are yeah. that 2%, you know? Yeah. Is it going to cost losing jobs? Well, hey, you instead of trying to blame the members that are using their benefit for to share the love to their family members, you know, because we all know we can all relate to that. Yeah. Uh, crack down to uh, what's his name of uh, Jeff Bezos for uh, Amazon. Those are those new companies, the ones that started online companies that start taking everybody else's company uh, uh, customers. <laughs> Blame them. You know what I mean? Well, shoot, Costco's online too. You yeah, know, Costco, Costco's online, Costco right? Follow the wave. We all uh-huh. knew, like I knew, like maybe fifteen years ago that e-commerce was going to be a huge thing. Exactly, it's going to be sold online. The thing is, is greed with this comp- these companies. Yeah. <laughs> membership, They're losing shares. Membership, yeah, the membership fees is what makes the money. That's the mm-hmm. revenue they 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 look at. Because I want to um, call them on their bluff on that one, cousin. What? I want to call them out on their bluff. Costco's bluff that they're saying that it's the membership. It's because I look at it like Walmart. Walmart is able to knock down their prices, retail prices, because they buy in bulk from all these vendors. Mm -hmm. Vendors or business owners that owns these particular items that, you know, Costco sells on the shelf. The more you buy, the lesser the price will be where you're able to sell it less. So Costco is buying all their stuff that they shop, that they, you know, sell to us, the consumers, everything in bulk. And they, and they buy, purchase it in advance. So all these manufacturer places already got the money. Yeah. They're already on the contract. So they're already manufacturing all these stuff to put in these order, you know, supply and demand. That's why I'm calling their bluff on that because they're just, you know, the same way I feel about commissary too. It's like, well, dude, why are you only just letting the active duty members when there's so many other employees that are civilians that are working on base? Yeah. Doesn't it make more sense if y'all want to make more money, the government? So just open it to the public, whoever's working within that area. It's not like the whole city is going to walk in there or drive in the post, you know, when they're checking IDs. It's, it's, to me, it's ridiculous. But again, <laughs> that might just be me being naive, right? But that's just the way I feel about it. Like you said, it's greed. That's where I'm at with that Costco thing, man. When they're talking yeah. about that, they're losing money because the members, uh, it's it's a the numbers of members is a lot less than the numbers of those that are purchasing from those uh, checkout kiosks. So you know what some of the um, their worries are is there. Of course, it's the revenue revenue loss, and then the um. Now they want to probably increase the prices of the membership cards and uh, they want to work on the tracking and data accuracy. They're saying that they want, you know, because obviously all the stores, they track what you buy. You know, when you when you like when you go to a regular shopping store like Safeway, whatever you have, you put it in your number and that tracks back to you. The card tracks back to you. They're claiming that um, they're getting mixed data when different people use this one card. So apparently they're trying to make sure that your needs are met, et cetera. <laughs> you know, just like these guys, they've, they've already went online. So of course some jobs were eliminated. They've already eliminated cashier jobs because you have self-checkout now at Costco and Sam's club. You know, I knew you see, hey, but my goodness is there. That's why I'm a true believer, you know, trying to help people keep their job. It's hard for me to go to the self checkout when you know there's cashiers right there. You know, um, we talk about uh, the human touch, the human uh, communication oh, right. and interaction. So I like to go through the line, but but you know, everyone's all about convincing and rushing. And when they see that long line, they rather go to the shorter line where you can just check out by yourself. Boom, bam, done. You're out. Oh, so yeah. Costco's already did a lot of cost saving by eliminating all that. So now they're trying to, not, so, you know, they have their corporate meetings. They sit there. Okay. Why are we have, not, well, why is the, why is this graph like this there and there? And then of course it's the membership card, because I know that's the biggest uh, money flow for them. It's the membership card. I mean, hell we go in, 
think you were going to buy one thing, you come out with a small card with probably just three items, you've already close, spent close to 300 bucks on that. Mm-hmm. Or maybe one item, 200 bucks or $100. You know, so the whole thing, it's, yeah, I, I call it bluff on, not on to get the car, but on the amount. I, I wish we get that number, but. Yeah, we are. Pretty. Sorry, folks, we don't got the numbers uh, in the front of us, but I, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to give you guys, uh, educate you guys with the percentage. And this is our opinion, consumers. yeah. It's kind of hard to see because these little small businesses are purchasing big ticket items. Why is it still a problem if there's, a, you know, they're talking about one membership? Yeah. How, how does that affect, are they talking about just the individual's? Consumers, or are we talking about also the small business? Because Costco deals with all types of, uh, you know, s- single home family that has a big family and uh, also consumer businesses. That yeah. Shop at Costco, you know, all these stuff, it just doesn't add up. It doesn't add up in, in Puni Mo's mind. But uh, yeah, I mean, I know I said uh, here's something that I am, um, you know, when it comes to Costco trying to look at the good side of it. I'm sorry, I don't see any good side of it. <laughs> you know, I I don't see any good side of it because also in that community, let's just say I don't have a Costco nearby me. Sam's Club is the one that's nearest by me and it's about 15 minute drive. Well, it affects the small business grocery stores, right? With these corporate mm-hmm. Costco stores, uh, groceries coming in and, you know, it's good for us, the consumers, but it's bad in the long run for the little uh, community that you live in. Do you get what I'm saying? Because now, yeah. of course, us as consumers, we want to go to where you can get the cheapest price or the fair price, you know, but we lack to forget us as Americans that in order to grow your community, you want to support your grocery, commu- you know, your little small business community. Um, it's really hard for us to do that, especially when uh, nothing, the inflation and all that involved it's really hard to try to support your little small businesses when the paycheck is not the same if that makes any sense Mm -hmm. so when everybody's just trying to get everybody you know us as regular consumers we're just trying to get by well see that's why consumers are looking at other revenues i mean revenues other avenues to go shop it you got places that sells in bulk like uh cash and carry is now called u.s food store whatever they keep changing their name Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a connect um a connection with Smart and Final. You know, people are just going there to shop because they don't have to have membership. Exactly. And that's why people are just uh, you know, meeting up with uh Queen, you know, the 50 plus family members that Queen have with Queen's own personal uh Costco <laughs> card, you know, that she will use because we're we're all, we're all trying to survive, yo. <laughs> right Shoot, we all trying to survive yo hey, will you call me and I'll wait for you at Costco we go in or I'll just give you my card go ahead and go shop away <laughs> yeah right because I was going to be like man I can't you know you know you you know for the listeners the one that has small small business owners restaurants I mean even free just anything that has to do with like cross Costco product that you purchase you know you're guilty but hey, it's all good, y'all. <laughs> it's freaking expensive nowadays, man. Hey, everybody like that Kirkland brand. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like is uh, uh, that's the fat boy in me. Just uh, you know, when it's checkout time, and go get some of that slice of pizza and the hot dog. That's <laughs> like, and the prices are still low. The prices are the- still low. There you go, man. Shoes. But here they are complaining about people using each other's cards. Come mm. on, Costco. <laughs> yeah. I guess uh, you can't hit, you can't hate them too for um, wor- wanting to make their money. I mean, we get it as as a co- as a business as a corporate. You need to make a target. You know, you need to get that money because there's so many employees that you got to pay for. Yes. Health insurance, dental. I mean, the, just the whole benefit itself costs a lot. And then also in injuries or, some, or lawsuits. There's so much stuff to pay. We get it. But y'all need to stop, like, just, you know, me and my coworkers, I, always used, to, I, used, to, I used to make this, you know, we used to make this joke. Uh, when the management comes in and we have our, our monthly report, 
You know, the report normally involves what? How do we do profit wise, right? Mm -hmm. The report is about profit, loss in profit, mm -hmm. and then what are we going to do about it? Then this is the goals that we have. <laughs> So I've worked in retail for over 10, 20 plus years. I understand exactly the schematics of these uh, corporations like Costco and all of them. So as you little men make women, yeah, make all always, that, those decisions yeah, behind the make, scenes. We make the, well, and, that's the thing. Corporate, corporate they're, they're, and they get they're rich mad. off of it. <laughs> and the, yeah, they get rich out of it. Not us, the management that's working in the front line, you know, the front end. It's just like they crack down, the, you know, they expect the supervisors and managers to try to motivate or discipline the employers. Because, I mean, Costco alone, you can have like what, maybe 100 to 200 employees per mm -hmm. Costco store, right? And then you have maybe one general manager that owns, that runs that, that store. Then you have a lot of assistant managers. And, man, they are under pressure, under fire about Target, about making quota, making yeah. quota. Right. And I'm like, all oh, this money that's going up. So me and my partners, we used to joke about this. We're like, okay. If they should stop meeting up at the golf course, because you know that is the stigma. That I mean, that is the uh <laughs> the, what what is that saying? That is the that's the saying. People know about that. Those those are spoken un the uh, the the secretive spoken truth, right? Mm -hmm. There are they the them rich folks out there on the golf course making deals, closing deals. You know, it's like maybe stop, stop. Uh, you know, pay for your own club memberships instead of using right. Costco's membership. Get your own plane, you know, instead of like buying a, a private plane. I mean, downgrade yourself, rich folks. You know, <laughs> it, it's still they're still going to be on top. <laughs> yeah, live within your mean, right? Instead you of just have everything that people away. want already, they yep. have what people want already, and they they want more. They want more, exactly. They might have gambled it away. At any of these sports events, it's possible, you know. And we always tease them like, "Okay, so which rich uh, son or daughter uh, has a lawsuit or broken something? Now they got to pay all this money and act like, oh, our company's failing." Nah, man. Nah. The sad thing about it is not yeah. a lot of them. Yep, we're out there buying twelve thousand dollars scotch bottles. You there know? you go. <laughs> yep, downgrade the mansion. Dollar four hundred dollars sunglasses. You know what? I ain't gonna lie. I'll be out there buying the same stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shoot, not me though. When it comes, I, 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 even when I could afford it, I still will. I, I, I'm just different, built different. But I hear you though, right? There is stuff that where you're like, uh, what, what do we call that? Where we, uh, that's only for celebratory times, celebration. Yep. That's Talk time where we uh bougie. <laughs> there, are, there are certain items that Puni Moore is bougie about, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. me is uh, uh, going to hotels and traveling. <laughs> Yeah, it's nothing wrong with try oh, paying for that's, money. That's what I would pay for a lot of money for, and then uh, you know, fly, uh, sitting on like business classes, the first class. Mm -hmm. But other than that, yeah, um, yeah, to each its own. But uh, what's the conclusion on this one, cousin? What's <laughs> our close out with this? this? One is, do what you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Costco's going to do what they're going to do. The consumer is going to do what they're going to do. Until that day comes, just do what you're still doing. I mean, it's not a crime that people are sharing their cars, you know. Mm. People are just trying to get stuff for their family, help, you know. Some people, they cannot afford or they choose not to buy the membership card. So continue the path of what you're doing because Costco is coming after everybody to make sure they get the membership so they can collect their data and make sure that they make money and so forth. And my, that's, that's my conclusion to this. We just wanted to uh, throw it out there of uh, Costco cracking down on the membership card. There you go. And leave a comment folks. I mean, do you shop at Costco or Sam's club and uh, how often do you shop there? And then what, what is it that you'd like to purchase over there? Uh, are you a, oh, you know what, Quinn, I wanted to say, are you a bulk shopper or just a regular shopper? I'm both. The bulk is only for certain items. For certain items, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, just certain items. Toilet know, paper, paper towels, shampoo, conditioner, all the uh, water. <laughs> He's a water. Yeah. 
But as for food, you know, not really. Only when um, I'm planning uh, big events. But sometimes I don't go to Costco. I go to Cash and Carry. I know. Even for me, you know, for me and my my three uh, giant kids over here that eats a lot uh, with my wife, the five of us, we thought we needed a Sam's Club, but we, I think we go, we just go to Sam's Club just to go to walk around. Right. You know? <laughs> like, seriously. Sample. You know? Thanks for the samples. <laughs> for real. I mean, like, what are you talking about? I'm a consumer that I have a membership, you know, but I sure ain't benefiting off of y'all stuff. Y'all taking that $60 y'all that I take out of every year. And, um, you know, that's my help for those that are using other family member stuff. <laughs> I'm helping the people. I'm helping the people. So we have the right to talk about this, Costco. <laughs> Don't come but, after us. Mm-hmm, but they, go ahead. Talk about it. Car salesman, the term. Think about it. Think about it when you're on a parking lot um, and then one of the car salesmen approaches you. They're supposed to have knowledge of the car and they assist you, right? And they negotiate prices with you and they do all the paperwork and stuff. They got the gift of gab. Where I'm getting at is you encounter some good ones and some annoying ones and then just some who are just um, assholes. Excuse my language. So what I'm asking about is the, the it's a slang term people use. Is it a negative thing or positive when you refer it as a car salesman? Like a, like I'm at work and then I'm meeting someone for the first time. And then someone who comes up and knows this person or don't even know them. And the first thing that comes out of their mouth after that person talks and walks away is like, this dude is nothing but a car salesman. Is that a bad thing or, or a good thing? That's what I'm trying to get at because when I, I hear this term a lot, you know, where I'm where I work at, and and, it, and it's like a negative thing because people think they're just selling wolf tickets. They're just here to sell you something. They don't care about your needs and or whatever. They just care about themselves. Get what they're trying to get. So when I hear people say car salesman, I just start cracking up. And I, I'm not trying to, like, um, give car salesmen out there who really do their job, does a great job at doing it. I'm just saying it's just the way people call each other or other people car salesmen. Man, or someone just say right in front of me, man, you're nothing but a car salesman. Just, just shut your mouth. You're just all about yourself. You don't care about anybody else. But their job, in actuality, they're supposed to be there to help people through the car uh, sales um, process. What do you think, Punimo? Yeah, it's a it's a bad thing when you are told that you're nothing but a car salesman. That is a bad term that we it's the slang that we use in the workplace. And yes, you're right, because a car uh from my own personal experience and opinion, yes, they are nothing but sleaze uh weasels who are just there to try to make I wouldn't even say a buck. But thousands and thousands of dollars off of you. Don't care about your need and just trying to sell a car. I mean, you can't, they are supposed to be informed. And a lot of them, the current ones, they really don't know nothing about their cars. That's the thing I don't get. But, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with the Costco deal. <laughs> Corporations, you know, they're just hiring folks who can uh, lie to your face. And... <laughs> The sad thing about it is uh, a lot of people do do get car salesmen or, or weasels that are able to uh, to talk you into getting a car that you didn't want to get, right? Yeah, yeah. Try to give you the best deal they can. I mean, so sorry, they say. <laughs> so they say, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, for those that are familiar with when it comes to cars, they, you understand exactly what we're talking about. It's a numbers game. They're trying to... Uh, speaking of that, did you know this was uh, back in... Uh, uh, what year was that? 2018. There was, there was actually... Uh, uh, who is... Uh, somebody on Google said, who is the number one car salesman in America? And a guy... <laughs> and there is an actual person that's a number one car salesman. Damn. Who? Are a you guy, serious? 
Yes, I'm serious. I'm, I'm a, it's a guy named Ali Reda, R E D A. So apparently, this dude broke a record by moving 1,582 cars off the lots at a at a car dealership somewhere out there in uh, Dearborn, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Man, this this guy Ali, he is the uh, epitome. Of a car salesman, <laughs> so I can only imagine <laughs> the bullshit that comes out of this guy's mouth, right? <laughs> I thought you were gonna tell me the slang term who the biggest car salesman out there, the term that they use for, but he's an actual sales car salesman. He's an actual car salesman, like just in a, a salesperson. <laughs> so I mean, I'm gonna start. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna be like, man, you ain't nothing but Ali, dog. Ali Rita. Oh, good for you, Ali. So, Ali Rita. Ali Rita. <laughs> Man, stop Ali talking to me, Ali Rita. Everybody. Mm, there go. Ali Rita. Doing this thing. Man, if you talk about 1,582 cars sold in a year, it's not telling me more data. I'm not going to go into it because I'm not going to try to read all that crap. But imagine 1,582, some car lots don't even have that uh, many cars in their lot, right? Because we're talking about car salesmen. There are different, I was going more into the avenue of what type of car salesmen do we have? You know, they have new car lots, right? That just sells nothing but brand new cars. Then you have the used cars, which Mm -hmm. is my particular favorite ones because of, I don't want to pay a whole, I don't believe in paying anything over $20,000 on a car because a car uh, depreciates value. You right, know? when you drive it off the lot. Right, as soon as you drive it off the lot. So wake up, folks. Uh, uh, so a lot of time, too, if I do have a mechanic buddy with me, I will take that person with me because I, you know, I'll be investing into a used car just for the simple fact to get me the A to B mm-hmm. and then turn around and sell my, that, that piece of shit in a year. <laughs> get another used one that's uh, kind of, you know, more newer. Get, get, get another one reliable, you know. But yeah, that 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 term that's used in the workforce, a car salesman, it speaks volume. It's it's a it's a it's a weasel, a person that likes to that has no like you said, uh personal interests, has no interest in your own as to others. Um, that has damn that can butter you up with 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 him or her words, uh, conniving, and yes, they're just manipulators. Majority of those people that are being called car salesmen, um, when they speak, you don't even want to listen or or hear their voice because you hear so much bullshit coming out of their mouth, you know. Well, at least that's us, the ones that are aware, right? But I mean, think about the the thousands and thousands of people out there that have uh, been uh, that are what do you call that? Easily influenced that are yeah. not aware, right? Yeah. That 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 has their trust on these uh, car people. That oh, you're the expert, right? <laughs> They're so naive; you don't even know what's hitting them. Yeah. You know, everything sounds so smooth, so good. And they're just like, oh, okay. He really cares for us. Look, he's saving us money. She's saving us money. You know what, Queen? I like this person. Mm, you know what, Queen? I do have a story. Uh, you know, it's for, it's for our listeners. So my yeah. first car, mm-hmm. this is uh, this is when I was uh, 18. Got my first, my very first car. It was a Ford, a Ford Taurus, uh, olive green. I mm-hmm. had that Talk about getting my ass ripped off. <laughs> Imagine this, folks. Uh, my monthly payment. I, I'm not going to discuss my down payment. Just say that uh, Pony Moore got ripped the hell off. This is in, in, picture this to the viewers. You know numbers. This is in the year 2000. My monthly payment for a used. So, again, this is year 2000. And the vehicle is 1996. That's the year. <laughs> I already told you the motto. My monthly payment was $250. That's a lot. A lot for a piece of shit car. <laughs> <laughs> it was a four-year deal. $250. So you can only imagine. Add that up. Tally that up on your own. But yeah. Them freaking car salesmen. And you know what? I was vulnerable. 
Uh I was vulnerable and I just, I was in need of a car and I'm 18 years old, you know, doing it myself. And of course, how did I pay for it? It was a tax. You know, ain't no 18 year old unless you're a baller or rich or a dealer. (laughs) You carry around a stack of 10,000 and up, right? So, you know, when my tax came, I, you know, my innocent self went over there to a car dealer. It was a friend of mine, a co-worker of mine who referred that person. Turned out to be that both of them were just sleaze, sleaze balls. <laughs> and they got my butt. But you know what? That car did take me, you know, the positive thing. I held on to that car for 10 years later. And it did good things for me because uh, owning your own vehicle, you know, paid it off after five, four, maybe four years paid off. Uh-huh. And then was able to own it for a whole uh, six years. Yeah, it did good, good for me. I saved a lot of money. Got your I, money out of it, though. Yep, got my money worth it. You know, I mean, I I, I owned that car until the wheels fell off. And oh, uh, that that salesman he uh, he took advantage of your your innocence. Knowing <laughs> innocence. you came through tax season, you're 18 mm-hmm. years old, and you're you're in need of a car. Yep. So once they sniffed that out. Oh, it's game on for them. And like unless, you said, a pack of wolves. Mm. <laughs> unless you know how to answer questions or you have the money, you can negotiate. But but then you still can negotiate. But man, they took advantage of they, they they do take advantage of the young ones or those they know. It don't have to be young ones. Could be people you know, the Gen Xs and so forth come in and they're they're just trying to get anything they can from you. Say anything they can just to get what they need and want. It could be a slow day, so they working their asses off to get that commission. It's all about the money. Mm-hmm. And in order to get a good deal, y'all, I mean, it taught Puni more valuable lesson. Never to trust them damn car uh, dealers, a salesperson. Uh, ever since then, yeah, I made sure I had the cash, the funds. And, of course, we live in our country of America. It's all about credit. You got good credit, definitely can get away with a better car, a brand new car. But guess what? Even that brand new car might cost you thirty thousand dollars. That'll be a waste of time too, if you ain't got your ducks. For... I mean, to me, a, a, I don't. I forgot who said it. A friend of mine said, uh, "Whatever you make annually, you know, from your job, just uh, you know, four. I think he said four percent. Just four percent uh, goes towards your vehicle." And I stuck by that principle. Well, no, I'm sorry, six percent, and that's just the kind of uh, the style that I went with, Queen. What I make annually, six percent. That's going to be my my price for a car. I'm talking about monthly payment, you know. That's good, and that's something you walk in and and if you stick to your guns, then the car salesman is going to try to work hard, but eventually he's going to be like, find what they're going to have to make it work because oh, yeah. they want to sell the car. It's not they they they're gonna exactly you're they're right. They're gonna make right? it work. They're mm-hmm. gonna make it work because they need your they want your business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they'll figure out they go to the manager. That's why it takes lots of those paperwork. But as long as you go in there knowing what you want and knowing what you're and having the right questions, mm-hmm. that's the thing. People people don't ask questions. Just like when they go to the hospital, they don't ask questions. But the car salesman, you you got to know how to play the game too. And then the car smells in at work. Are you a car salesman, listeners? Or do you deal with some of them right next to you or the cubicle next to you or the or down in the warehouse? Mm-hmm. Wherever you look at. You can see them walking from a mile away. I mean, they're the ones probably standing right next to the supervisors. <laughs> wow.